What's up guys? Welcome back to the home slice. Welcome back out here to the sharpening shack. <laughs> I'm ready to go. I've got my Sharp Knives Matter t-shirt, <laughs> which is hilarious. My parents um, have been watching my YouTube channel and bought me this shirt for my birthday, which is great. Thanks mom and dad. <laughs> You're awesome. Um, I have been kind of piecing together these tests with this ship rope to see if anything can get through it with the the death rope. And I thought that instead of making a huge compilation, I'll just do uh, one test at a time for the next little bit because I'd like to test some dual grit edges. So today I have this Benchmade 943. It's wearing a dual grit edge. It failed to get through the ship rope with a hair whittling edge. Indeed, every hair whittling edge that I have tried to, that I've tested on this ship rope, including Maximet, failed to get through, even under great, great pressure. It just, it stopped initiating cuts. My theory is, is that a hair whittling edge, unless you get a really, really good one, um, that's under 100 on a best machine, hair whittling edges often have a little bit of foil burr left that catches. Hi there. So hair whittling operates by either the edge apex being extremely, extremely fine and being able to catch in between the follicles of a hair, or more commonly, there'll be a little tiny bit of foil burr left. It's very difficult to tell which one you're working with. And all of the edges that I have got to whittle hair so far have probably had a little bit of foil burr because they test up above 100 grams on a best test machine. So my theory about what goes wrong is that I think that that little foil burr actually wraps over and is rounded and, and that rounded surface that it presents on the edge apex isn't able to get through the fibers of this particular rope that I'm trying to cut. Alternatively, it's a nasty, dirty rope, so it could also be that it just annihilates edges. And the one success that I had <laughs> with my Spyderco military is due to a really excellent heat treatment or as a bit of a fluke, or perhaps the edge had widened to an extent that it was um, at a sweet spot where it was like durable enough to like snap through the fibers and not be taken off by the dirt, but it wasn't so thin that it actually got deformed under the load that it takes to get through this rope. So we're gonna shed some light on which of those things it is. And one of the first things that we'll do is we'll test this Benchmade 943 with a dual grit edge, my traditional dual grit edge. And we'll also test um, in the next video, a simple steel and a Victorinox paring knife to see if that fares better than the hair whittling edge. Anyway, enough talk, let's get to it. Okay, that is a no. <laughs> I pushed really hard right here on this guy and um, it's no longer initiating new cuts through the fibers. So dual grid S30V is not getting through this rope. Benchmade's heat treatment. Um, I, I don't have a lot of hopes for the Victorinox, but we'll test it anyway. I guess this is not going to provide us with tons of data. It, except that if I ever get a knife to cut through this, it will be like the holy grail of edge stability and aggressiveness. <laughs> like that sharpening method, I will freely recommend if I can get through this rope because it is just destroying everything. I'd hoped that this test would give us a bit more usable data, but uh, I think it's become a bit more of a like, Mostly everything, this rope destroys the edge. And if anything gets through it, then that's like quite exceptional. Next thing, I just realized I should, I should demonstrate more what I'm observing here. Um, so we'll do a best test on this Benchmade 943. I'll try to line up the camera so you can see. This thing started out at about 180 grams of pressure to sever the line. 
which is not the most keen edge, but it was quite a crisp and aggressive dual grit edge. So we'll take the portion of the edge which did a lot of the work, probably right about there, and we'll give it a test now to see what we're at. Yeah, so that S30V is uh, annihilated. This is 1,144 best, over a kilogram of pressure to sever that line. So this is indeed the death rope. Man, I, I'm so curious as to how the edge on my military actually made it through that. But to be honest, like I've been using the military since then, and it's actually the edge is still functioning. So I'm so confused. It must take like a real combination of toughness and wear resistance together to actually make it through this ship rope. Like, I wonder if that's the secret sort of formula. Let's just for fun, because I've still been EDCing this, this thing cut through the ship rope and I've still been EDCing it, it's still been working. So let's test this M4 edge against that S30V edge, put to the same task, and more. I don't anticipate this M4 edge will be very sharp because I've been using it for a month now. And it's unresharpened from the actual um, rope test. Yeah, so it's definitely in need of a resharpening, 556. But this this particular edge has cut up, you know, about, well, just like lots and lots of cardboard for my compost and then went through the ship rope and then has been used for three weeks since. And it's still actually got a working edge. It's pretty bad. Like, I really need to resharpen it. But that's so interesting. That's half. That's half of what the S30V measurement was and it's done, oh my goodness, probably 10 times as much work, if not 20 times as much work. So very interesting. Well, it just bears further testing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. I'll just say peace out from the home slice. You guys take care. Bye.